If your car can't sit still at idle, it's not just getting old, it's trying to warn you. The engine's revving up and down for a reason, and no, it's not just dirty sensors. The real reasons are hidden deep in your car's systems, and most people miss them. Today, we're going to walk you through every bit of it in this video. One of the most common reasons a car's engine RPM goes up and down while idling is a vacuum leak. Modern European engines are built to run with a very precise mix of air and fuel. This balance has to be just right for the engine to work smoothly. But when there's a leak in any of the vacuum hoses, it throws everything off. Air sneaks into the engine without passing through the mass airflow sensor. Because this air isn't measured, the engine doesn't know it's there. That causes what's known as a lean condition, when there's too much air and not enough fuel in the mix. European cars use all kinds of vacuum hoses made from rubber or silicon. These hoses connect different engine parts, like the intake manifold, brake booster, fuel pressure regulator, and emission control systems. One of these systems is the positive crankcase ventilation, or PCV valve. On older petrol engines, there might also be an exhaust gas recirculation, or EGR valve. The hoses often use clamps or are simply pushed into place. Over time, the connections can loosen or the hoses can crack, especially in Europe where the climate changes from one region to another. Cold winters, hot summers, and constant temperature shifts can make the material expand and contract, which eventually causes damage. When a vacuum leak happens, too much air gets into the engine, and the car's computer, called the ECU, tries to fix it by adding more fuel. But this constant adjusting creates a back and forth effect, which makes the RPM go up and down while the car is just sitting still. Sometimes, you might even hear a hissing noise from under the bonnet. That sound is a strong clue that air is escaping where it shouldn't. So, if your car seems to be breathing unevenly while it's idle, a vacuum leak might be a hidden problem. Now, if you're enjoying this video, make sure to hit the like and subscribe button. Another key reason for unstable RPM at idle is a problem with the mass airflow sensor. This sensor is one of the most important parts of a European petrol engine. Its job is to measure how much air is going into the engine and how dense that air is. It sends this information to the ECU, which then decides how much fuel to inject. The goal is to keep the air-fuel ratio exactly right, what's called a stoichiometric mix, or lambda equals one, for perfect combustion and low emissions. Most European cars use mass airflow sensors from well-known manufacturers like Bosch and Continental, which used to be Siemens VDO. These sensors usually work on something called the hot wire or hot film principle. But like any part, the mass airflow sensor can have problems. If it gets dirty, often from dust or oil that comes from aftermarket air filters, it can start to give the wrong readings. Sometimes, the sensor fails inside. Either way, it sends the wrong signal. The ECU gets confused and the engine doesn't get the right air-fuel mix. That can make the idle rough and unpredictable. To figure out if the mass airflow sensor is the issue, many European mechanics use a quick test. They look at the reading from the mass airflow sensor when the engine is warm and idling. For example, if your car has a 2-litre engine, the mass airflow sensor should show about 2 grams of air per second. If the reading is way off, too high or too low, it could mean the sensor isn't working right or that there's a leak somewhere in the intake system. In older European petrol cars, keeping the idle steady is often handled by a part called the Idle Air Control Valve, or IACV. This small valve usually sits on or near the throttle body. When the throttle plate is closed, the IACV opens slightly to let in just enough air for the engine to keep running at idle. The car's computer, or ECU, tells the valve exactly how much air to allow through. This helps the engine stay smooth even when things like air conditioning or power steering put extra load on it. But over time, the IACV can run into trouble. Carbon deposits from the engine's vapors and dirty air can build up inside it. Sometimes, the motor or moving parts inside the valve start to wear out. When that happens, the valve can stick or stop working properly. As a result, the engine might not get the right amount of air at idle. You might notice the RPMs dropping too low, which could cause the engine to stall, or the RPMs might jump up and down without warning. Both are signs the IACV might be failing. Modern European cars have moved away from using IACVs. Instead, they rely on a newer system called Electronic Throttle Control, or ETC. This system is also known as drive-by-wire because there's no cable connecting the accelerator to the throttle plate. Instead, when you press the pedal, sensors send a signal to the ECU, which then tells an electric motor how much to open the throttle. That same motor also controls the airflow at idle, replacing the job the IACV used to do. While ETC systems offer more precision, they can also have their own problems. One common issue is from the throttle position sensor, or TPS. 
This sensor helps the ECU figure out exactly how open the throttle plate is. If it sends the wrong signal, the engine might get too much or too little air at idle. That causes the RPMs to go up and down. Another issue happens when carbon builds up on the throttle body, making it hard for the plate to move freely. If the motor that opens and closes the throttle plate starts to wear out, it can also lead to a shaky idle. Idle issues can also start in the fuel system. For the engine to idle smoothly, it needs a steady mix of air and fuel. If that balance is off, the engine can struggle to stay running. One thing that can throw off this balance is clogged fuel injectors. Over time, Deposits from the fuel, like carbon or varnish, can block the injector tips. When this happens, the fuel spray becomes uneven or weaker, and the engine doesn't get the right amount of fuel at idle. The fuel pump is another part that can cause trouble. If it's getting weak or starting to fail, it might not deliver enough pressure to the injectors. That leads to fuel starvation, which can cause the engine to hesitate or even stall when idling. A clogged fuel filter can have the same effect by restricting the flow of fuel through the system. Even though fuel quality in Europe is generally good, there are still differences in fuel blends across countries. Some regions use more biofuels or different additives, which can lead to injected clogging over time, especially in older cars or ones that haven't been serviced regularly. Some early warning signs of a fuel delivery issue include a high-pitched whining sound from the fuel tank, trouble starting the engine, or a lag when you press the accelerator. If left unchecked, these symptoms can develop into a full-blown idle problem. The ignition system also plays a big role in keeping the idle smooth. If something goes wrong here, it can lead to engine misfires, which makes the RPMs jump around. The two main culprits are spark plugs and ignition coils. Over time, spark plugs wear out. The gap between the electrodes can get too wide or the tips can become damaged. That makes it harder to ignite the fuel air mix properly. Worn plugs cause one or more cylinders to misfire, which leads to rough idling and vibrations. Ignition coils can also fail. These coils are responsible for turning battery voltage into the high voltage needed to create a spark. If a coil starts to go bad, it might deliver a weak or inconsistent spark. That causes the same kind of misfires as bad spark plugs. Many European vehicles use high quality parts from brands like Bosch, NKJ, Beru, or Delphi. These parts are designed to last, but they still need to be replaced at the right intervals, which are usually listed in the vehicle's service manual. In modern European petrol engines, the ignition system is often built using a coil on plug setup. This means that each spark plug has its own ignition coil mounted directly on top of it. This design improves reliability and makes it easier to find which cylinder is misfiring. When all parts of the ignition system are working well, the engine runs smoothly at idle. But once something wears out or fails, you'll likely notice the engine shaking or the RPM needle moving up and down, especially when the car is stopped. Modern European petrol cars are full of sensors. These sensors work together to send the engine control unit, or ECU, the data it needs to run things smoothly. But when one or more of these sensors go bad, the engine can start acting strange, especially when it comes to idle RPM. One common troublemaker is the throttle position sensor, or TPS. This sensor tells the ECU how far open the throttle plate is. If it gives the wrong reading, the ECU might think the engine needs more or less fuel than it really does. That confusion can make the engine idle roughly or cause the RPM to go up and down for no clear reason. Then there's the pre-catalyst oxygen sensor, also called the lambda sensor. Its job is to measure how much oxygen is in the exhaust gases. This helps the ECU decide how to mix air and fuel. If this sensor sends false information, the ECU might make the air-fuel mixture too rich or too lean at idle. That can cause the RPM to rise and fall as the engine struggles to stay balanced. Another sensor that can cause trouble is the crankshaft position sensor, or CPS. This one is mostly responsible for timing the spark and the fuel injection, but if it starts failing off and on, it can confuse the ECU about how fast the crankshaft is spinning. That can sometimes lead to RPM problems, especially when idling. The engine coolant temperature sensor, or ECT, also plays a role. This sensor tells the ECU how warm the engine is. If the reading is wrong, the ECU might think the engine is still cold when it's not, or the other way around. As a result, the engine might get too much or too little fuel during warm-up, which can cause the idle RPM to bounce around until everything reaches the proper temperature. After 2001, European petrol cars began using a dual lambda sensor system to meet EOBD2 emission standards. One sensor is placed before the catalytic converter, and the other is placed after it. 
The first sensor helps the ECU control the air-fuel mixture. The second one checks if the catalytic converter is working well. But if either of these sensors fail, they can feed the ECU incorrect data. That might not only affect emissions, but can also cause problems with how smoothly the engine idles. 